In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a personalized do not disturb sign using 2D design and a laser cutter. It might help first of all though, if you watch the other video I did on how to draw a house because it covers quite a lot of the skills that you'll need. There's a link in the description. First, the 2D design stuff. Okay, when you go on 2D design, click on Setup Drawing Layout, and then go on User Defined, change the material size X to 80, Y to 220, and Design Guide to X60, Y200. Then also change the Design Guide offsets to 10 and 10. Click on OK and this will give you a page size just slightly bigger than the sign that you're going to draw with a grey rectangle in the middle of that page in which you will fill that to draw your sign. And making sure that grid lock is on on the right, use the shapes tool on the left hand side to draw a rectangle filling the guide. What you'll see me do now is use the dimensions tool on the left just to double check that the width is 60 and the depth is 200. But if you do this step, make sure you delete them afterwards just like I did. The next stage is to use the circle tool to draw a hole which will hang over the door handle. What we're not going to do though is use the normal circle tool because it's hard to get it the right size. So you click and hold down, select the second circle along and it's the one that you can time the radius into. And as you see, I will put the radius at 17.5. And what you do then is move it down by a few, like I've done, then click to fix the circle in place. Right, the next stage is to get the straight line tool to draw two straight lines from the circle to the edge. And what this will do is help us to create the gap that you can slide it onto the door handle with. Now, the lines need to overlap the circle, but then we need to delete parts of them. If you notice, if you use a delete any tool, it deletes a whole object. So click and hold down on the delete any tool, select the second one along the delete intersections, then all of a sudden you're able to delete sections of lines like that. Now it's time to create curves at the corners. So select the arc tool, click and hold down, go across to the very last one, the filleted arc, and you can type a size in, but we're going to keep ours at 10. Click on OK. Then if you click on one line, then the one next to it, it creates a curve. And so do that all the way around until you've done it six times. I'm sure you'll agree that makes it look a lot nicer. OK, there we go. Right, next, we need to change the black lines that we've just drawn to green in order that the laser cutter knows to cut them out. So use the pointer tool in the top left, the select tool, click and drag to select all of it, then go on line color at the top, and you have to select green. It's really important that it's the green that's underneath where it says custom colors. So click on the green, click on OK, click away from your drawing, and you'll see it's all gone green. And next, it's time to put some writing on. So using the ABC text tool on the left, we're going to start putting the writing on. So I'll put, please do not disturb. And click on OK. You'll notice it's far too big, not laid out particularly well, and it is the default font, which we may not want. So using the select tool on the top left, click on it to select it. If you use squares around the outside, you can resize it. Use a square in the middle to reposition it. However, it's still not centered. So if you go on to property in the bottom right and then settings, you'll notice in the bottom left where it says alignment. If you click on that and then you select centered, then it will center it. And I've changed the font just to Comic Sans as well. So you'll see now the text is a different font and it's all centered. And the next thing that you'll see me do is click on the two overlapping squares underneath the text. That copies and pastes it. And the good thing about that is I won't have to change the centering or the font because it will keep those settings. All I need to do is click on property in the bottom right and just change the text. I click on OK and it will put it there. And I can move it around a little bit. Right, the next thing is I need to line the text up so it's centered. So whilst it's still selected, if you click on edit at the top, then align, 
and center vertically, then all you need to do is click on one of the lines on the actual outline and it will center the writing for you. And there you go, you're now ready to laser cut. So go over to the laser cutter, log onto the PC next to it and load up your file. The next stage then is to lift the cover up of the laser cutter, put some material in. In this case, we're going to use four millimeter laser ply. However, you can use MDF, you can use the materials as well. You can grab the head of the laser cutter, position it over the material that you're using, press the auto focus button so that the machine can actually detect where the top of the material is. Don't forget to press back. Now, the next stage is to click on file and print and then you have to select the X252 machine, which is our laser cutter. Click on properties and pen, and it's time to change some of the settings. Now, on the wall, on the charts, it gives you the settings for our machine, and it tells us that for the black lines, which are the ones we want to engrave, we have to change speed to 100, power to 100, and PPI, I believe, at 400. The green lines, which are the cut lines, they have to move a lot slower at 2.1, we keep the power on 100 and then we slide the PPI all the way up to X, click on OK, click on OK again and then if you have a look at the display on the laser cutter you should see your file name come through. At this stage we check that the chiller switched on and that we turn the extractor on to pull out all of the smoke that's created and then you can go to the console on the laser cutter and you can press the red start stop button and that should start your job processing. Now, the first thing that happens is it moves left to right quickly and it raster engraves the text on. Once it's finished raster engraving the text on, it goes around the outline of the writing and then the next thing that it's going to do is it will start cutting the green lines. Now, obviously, when you engrave, it only scratches the surface, really, burns it into the surface. When we're cutting on the outside, it has to move a lot slower in order to concentrate the laser's energy so that it can cut all the way through the plywood. And there you have it. It moves to the top right-hand corner and bleeps, and that means that your job is now complete. So you can turn the extraction off, leave it a minute or so, lift the lid up and then you can remove your job and very well it's turned out too so you'll notice that there's some burning on the top around the lettering and around the outside and also some charring on the underside just use some 150 grit glass paper to clean this up remembering to sand in the same direction as the grain